Hello, good evening everyone. In this lecture of the cardiovascular system, we will understand the regulations of the heart and also by the heart. So, regulation of the heart or on the heart, it is mainly of two types. Regulation of the Heart. Now, heart, which is a beautiful organ, and its main function is to keep on pumping the blood until and unless the person dies. It has got two types of regulation. First is the auto regulation, and second is the neural. Regulation. Auto regulation of the heart is the capacity or the own capacity of the heart to regulate whenever there is increase or decrease in the blood flow. So, auto regulation of the Heart is its capacity to maintain the blood flow. The normal blood pressure in a body, we have studied the arterial blood pressure is 120 by 80, like the systolic and the diastolic. So, whenever there is fluctuation in the blood pressure means that either more blood enters the heart or less blood enters the heart, the heart has the capacity to adjust in such a way that the arterial blood pressure is not altered. Now, this autoregulation, the range, the pressure range within which the heart can maintain it is between 60 mm Hg to 200 mm Hg. So, whenever there is like fluctuation of the blood pressure from 60 to 200 mm Hg, the heart has the capacity to auto-regulate its blood flow. It can bring back the altered pressure back to normal. Yes, such the good morning, good evening to you. Now, for this autoregulation to happen, there are two theories that govern the autoregulation. Two theories that governs the autoregulation. One is the myogenic theory. Another is the metabolic theory. Now, this myogenic theory, myogenic theory, Myogenic theory means that the blood vessel, when more blood is entering through the blood vessel, say for example, this is a blood vessel. Okay. Now, through this blood vessel, the blood goes and reaches the heart. So, depending on the blood flow. Now, for example, suppose there is increased blood flow. So, when there is increased blood flow, this blood vessel which is made up of smooth muscle and also has got elastic tissue, what they will do? They will increase their diameter. They will increase their diameter and there can be more inflow of the blood whenever there is increased blood pressure. Similarly, Opposite condition. Opposite condition, 
in case of decreased blood volume decreased blood volume means not enough amount of blood very less amount of blood is passing through the blood vessel in that condition the blood vessel will narrow down will change its diameter and it will become narrow when there is less amount of blood flowing through it so this is the myogenic theory like adjustment of the blood vessel in response to the increase or decrease of the blood flow now this myogenic theory this is a calcium mediated process now for this widening and constricting like thinning of the blood vessel calcium as a metabolite calcium as a substance is a essential process this is the myogenic theory coming to the metabolic theory the second one metabolic theory of the auto regulation in the blood there are always certain metabolites that are in circulation like metabolites like thromboxane e2 prostacycline then endothelines and nitric oxide now these metabolites in circulation can bring about vasodilation and vaso constriction of the blood vessel depending on the blood flow okay so these metabolites some of them have the capacity for vasoconstriction some of them have the capacity for vasodilation so by altering that one they can bring about adjustment in the blood flow to maintain the blood pressure like thromboxane e two now this one it is derived from araki donoic acids by the platelets this is a metabolite now when is this metabolite used this thromboxin e2 is needed for clotting of blood what is this thromboxin e2 do this thromboxin e2 clusters the plate blood so whenever there is any cut or injury blood oozes out so in the site of this cut this thromboxin it helps in the clustering of the platelets now this thromboxin this is this this in induces which one is thromboxin into induces vaso constriction it causes vaso constriction that means it causes the narrowing down of the lumen of the blood vessel so that the loss of the blood is minimalized very less blood is lost it is minimalized okay similarly prostacycline 
what it does it inhibits the over clustering of platelets so that there is not too much of vasoconstriction and so that the site where there is no bleeding there is no platelet clustering okay these are the two metabolites which helps in the regulation of the blood other than that the metabolite which is endothelin now this endothelin this is formed by the endothelial cells like the capillaries they have one single layer of endothelial cell the other blood vessel they have got a layer of smooth muscle elastic muscle and a thin lining of the endothelial cell now this endothelial they are this endothelial they secrete a substance which is called the endothelin so endothelin are potent they are very very potent vaso constrictor they can cause constriction of the blood vessel very very potently like if this is the blood vessel if this is a blood vessel then this vaso constrictor like endothelin it will immediately reduce the movement of the blood vessel and make it narrow it is very very active and potent in this one now this endothelin this endo helin they are 21 amino acid long they are a polypeptide that is having only 21 amino acids and they are of the sub type endothelin 1 endothelin 2 and endothelin 3 and all of them are potent very efficient vaso can strip thus okay they are very potent vaso constrictors a very very strong and potent vaso dilator is the nitric oxide now this is this is a very strong vaso Dai later, it's a very very potent strong vessel dai later. Like how they were very strong vessel constrictor. Now this nitric oxide, it is a metabolite which is formed as a byproduct. So nitric oxide is formed as a by product from the arginine metabolism and the enzyme that is essential for the formation of this nitric oxide is nitric oxide synthetase okay nitric oxide synthetase is needed for formation of nitric oxide so actually what happens in arginine metabolism in presence of nitric oxide synthetase where citrulline is formed as a by product nitric oxide is let out now this nitric oxide synthetase it is also present in three subunits nitric oxide synthetase 1 nitric oxide synthetase 2 and nitric oxide synthetase 
three. Okay. Now these are present in brain, immune. These are present in brain. Then immune cells and also in the renal cells in the kidney. Now the property of this nitric oxide is that this nitric oxide, how does it act as a potent vasodilator? It can easily diffuse into the smooth muscles. Okay, it can easily diffuse into the smooth muscle and after diffusing, they produce vasodilation. Now, this metabolites after secretion. Suppose there has been increase in the blood pressure due to narrowing down of the blood vessel, then substances like nitric oxide, they will stick to the blood vessel. Then after secretion, adheres to the blood vessel and is washed away again in circulation. Okay, this is how they act. Now, there are other physical factors also which are good vasodilators. Conditions like hypoxia, that is Drop in the partial pressure of oxygen. Drop in the partial pressure of oxygen. Or hypercapnia. Okay. Hypercapnia. Okay. Conditions like that, what they do? They induce vessel. Dilation. So, if the body is such that it is having low partial pressure of oxygen and low and high partial pressure of carbon dioxide like hypoxia and hypercapnia, then it induces vasodilation. Yes, full high to you also. And oxygen is a very potent vaso. Dilator in the brain. So, this oxygen, whenever its supply is more in the brain, the blood vessel, the cerebral blood vessels, they undergo dilation. Okay. Adenosine. Dilates the Cardiac muscle. Adenosine dilates the cardiac muscle and exercise dilates the skeletal muscles. Okay. Substances like Lactic acid and potassium in large quantity are also good dilators. Okay, so these are the substances which are good dilators. Okay, so this was about our auto regulation auto regulation means the inert capacity of the heart to adjust and control its blood pressure whenever there is any fluctuation in the blood pressure this is the inert control in which the range is 600 to 
200 mm Hg and we have also studied about the potent vasoconstrictor and vasodilators also which are the as per the metabolic theory. Now there is a neural circuit about which we already studied in the arterial blood pressure. Now we will have a look at it once again in a little bit in depth. So here is this neural regulation of the total cardiovascular system. So why we are writing cardiovascular system? Because this neural regulation this is not only just like the auto regulation also that is not only affecting the heart it is also affecting the blood vessels and the structures which are physiologically related to the functioning of the heart. So neural regulation what did we study about the neural regulation? The main integrating center for the signals that that come from the heart is in the medulla it's in the medulla okay main signal that comes this in the medulla so cool uh, yeah we don't acid ba base balance this one it we must do it in the renal physiology section so we are yet to do that one so please do it you will get it now the centers the centers are vasomotor center okay vasomotor center then you have the medullary parasympathetic center now this vasomotor center this is also called as the sympathetic center okay the medullary parasympathetic center it is also called as the inhibitory center and the center that integrates that receives and integrates the information from all these center or cells information to this center to this center is the nucleus of practice solitarius these are the important centers. Okay, these are the centers. Now, there are some afferent nerve fibers that is carrying the information to the center. Okay, we have understood the arterial blood pressure yesterday, so we know we will come to that also as a quick revision. But once the once the information goes to the tractus of nucleus solitarius then it again sends back to certain center that will modulate or that will change the function of the heart and the blood vessel so such centers such center there are two centers like that one one is the rvlm the Rostral ventrolateral nucleus of medulla. Okay. Now, this is also known as the, the term you have heard in the last class pressure 
area. So when we talk about the pressure area, what is the function of this pressure area? Pressure means it will press. It will increase everything. So the function of this pressure area is to increase the heart rate. Positive chronotropy that is increase in the heart rate. Then we have positive ionotropy that is increase in the contractility that is force of contraction then positive chromotropy increase in the conductivity and positive Bathmotropy increase in the excitability. Okay, these are the functions that happens when this rostral ventrolateral nucleus of the medulla it is stimulated. So opposite to that, to do the other function, there is another nucleus which is caudal ventrolateral medulla. Now this caudal ventrolateral nucleus of medulla also known as the also known as the yes rvlm is same as the cardiac accelerator center yes it is a this who prepa so this is the same actually synonym we'll come to that one yes you are correct so it is also known as the d pressor area means it will do the opposite function of the rvlm the d pressor area so obviously what will it do? Its function is like stimulation to it. It will just do the opposite. Like negative chronotropy. That is drop in the heart rate. Then we have the negative ionotropy. That is drop in the contractility. I am writing it short and then negative bathmotropy that is decrease in the excitability and negative tromotropy that is decrease in the conductivity. Okay, this is also like this. Pressure area does the opposite of the depressor area and the vice versa. It is area wise. Now, going by the neurotransmitter wise, we will just understand everything part by part, then we will correlate it with the example. So, here the neurotransmitter, neurotransmitters involved. Okay. The neurotransmitter involves. They are both excitatory and the inhibitory neurotransmitters. Both excitatory. Example, glutamate and inhibitory. Example, GABA. Okay. Are involved. So, when when the CVLM or or CVLM or RVLM has to be Stimulated 
by nucleus of tractor solitarius then glutamate is released okay so first whenever this rvlm and caudal and rostral both have to be stimulated once the nucleus of tractor solitarius decide that this either of these two either rvlm or cvlm one has to be stimulated then glutamate is released because it is excitatory neurotransmitter point to remember when cvlm is stimulated then gaba because it will inhibit the function it has to inhibit the function gaba will be released will be released because gaba is the inhibitory neurotransmitter okay all this thing the centers this uh, nucleus of tractus solitarius the vasomotor center with its rvlm and the cvlm they have a direct effect on the innervation from the autonomous nervous system these centers so these centers have an impact from the autonomous nervous system autonomous nervous system so that is the sympathetic and para sympathetic nerve fiber so sympathetic nerve fiber upon stimulation okay what it do it will upon stimulation it will activate the cardiac accelerator centers whereas whereas parasympathetic innervation upon stimulation it will activate the cardiac the acceleration center now here the cell bodies of this parasympathetic nervous system lies in nucleus of ambiguous nucleus of ambiguous where is the cell body of sympathetic fibers lie in nucleus of tractus solitarius so this is like the complex idea that we have been understood we have been like made into a clear conceptual thing so now we understand the circuit the neural circuit and what are the components now all this component how do they coordinate we have understood the centers we have understood the neurotransmitter involved how do they coordinate say for example now the whole concept we will understand with an example so an example say for example there has been increase in the blood pressure there has been increase in the blood pressure okay now this one increase in the blood pressure what it will do it will directly go and go and stimulate the baro receptors it will stimulate the baro receptors we know what are the baro receptors we know the baro receptors they are the aortic arch and the carotid sinus right now 
this baro receptors are these two things this aortic arch and the carotid sinus just for our understanding sake we are drawing that way here this baro receptor he will send afferent he will send the signal via the afferent nerve aortic arch it will send via it will send afferent via the vagus 10th nerve and this one will send via the 9th glosso pharyngeal nerve okay these are all clean now these two they will go and they will send the information they will relay the information to the nucleus of tractus solitarius which is in the medulla which is in the medulla now what will this medulla see the medulla will see that it has received information or the nucleus of tractus solitarius it will sense that there has been increase in the blood pressure so when there it senses that there is increase in the blood pressure then it will release the glutamate it will release glutamate from glutaminergic nerves okay and this glutamate it will go and it will stimulate it will go and it will stimulate the caudal ventrolateral region of the medulla nucleus of the medulla now this caudal ventrolateral region of the medulla what is it this is a p pressure area it is a deep pressure area now this one will immediately release baba via this baba it will inhibit the rostral ventrolateral when this is happening like the ros the pressure area is like quieten the pressure area the pressure area is suppressed and the deep pressure area is like stimulated now what will happen via the now there will be inhibition to the cardiac accelerator system that is via sympathetic nervous system it will be inhibited and the de accelerator de accelerator center that is via the para sympathetic innervation it will be stimulated so when this cardiac accelerator center that is inhibited then then there will be drop in the heart rate right there will be drop in the contractility and there will be vaso dilation there will be vaso dilation and when this de accelerator or the parasympathetic innervation when that is stimulated the same thing will happen there will be inhibition to sa node which ultimately will cause decrease in the heart rate and there will be there will also be vaso dilation so this is how the neural circuit work now this neural circuit the centers especially they receive the excitatory tonic excitatory signal from the higher centers so how do we remember this neural 
circuit receives excitatory signals from the higher centers okay mainly mainly from the frontal lobe orbital lobe from the motor cortex and pre motor cortex some observations are made like if the if the medial ventral and lateral nuclei of thalamus is stimulated then it induces tachycardia tachycardia this is one observation then second is that second is that emotions okay like sometimes a person is sad sometimes a person is happy emotion anxiety and temperature change like all of a sudden getting exposed to hot temperature all of a sudden exposed to the cold temperature alters the heart rate via the hypothalamus so these are the role of the higher centers on this heart rate okay important thing to remember is that in context of this neural regulation direct this is like a very high yield thing that one has to remember direct stimulation of the sympathetic nerve it sympathetic nerve via alpha receptor this receptor is present in the in the blood vessels and also via the alpha receptor in the epi cardia it causes vaso con friction now via the beta receptor via the beta receptor in the muscle it causes vaso dai le okay where is direct stimulation of para sympathetic innervation causes slight increase in the heart rate okay these are the few observation that has been seen so now we shall move on to the various physiological reflexes so i'll just take 2 minutes break for that and i will be right back with the physiological reflexes which are essential
Okay. Now coming back to the reflexes. So now we will start the important physiological reflexes which are essential in our and for our clinical knowledge. First reflex that we are going to talk about The first reflex that we are going to talk about is the vein bridge reflex. Now, what is a vein bridge reflex? Any increase in Perfusion or blood flow or blood flow to the heart causes causes tachycardia. Tachycardia. So When ever there is increase in the blood volume, increase in the blood volume is also called as the hypervolemia, like the volume of the blood has become more, it has increased. So, whenever there is increase in the blood volume, what will happen? There will be increase in venous return there will be increase in the venous return so when there is increase in the venous return what will be there there will be like more of the like there will be more amount of blood entering through the vena cavas right so when venous return is increased there is stretching of the atrium because more blood enters into the atrium. So, the, vena, the atrium, they become stretched. They become stretched. Now, there are certain cardiopulmonary receptors. The CP that is cardio pulmonary receptors present in the atria gets stretched. This is what is happening now. This is where the vein bridge reflex starts from. It is vein bridge reflex that starts from. So, we can write the components of this vein bridge reflex. Components means what are the structure that are involved in this reflex are essentially first and foremost the cardiopulmonary stretch receptors okay in atria then we have the vagus efferent nerve we have the nucleus of tractus solidarius and we have the sympathetic and para sympathetic efferent nerves these are the main components main structures that are present in the vein bridge reflex so what happens now what happens now is that increase in the blood volume it will 
stimulate the cardiopulmonary receptors in the atria so now when this cardiopulmonary receptor is stretched in the atria what it will do what it will do at once it will stimulate the nucleus of tractor solitarius so when this nucleus of tractor solitarius is saying that okay there is increased in the perfusion the blood volume has been more so what it does it kind of it kind of tries to pump more blood in the periphery so in doing so to enable the heart to pump more blood what should the nucleus of tractor solitarius do the nucleus of tractor solitarius will stimulate the cardiac acceleratory center and it will inhibit the cardiac deacceleratory center obviously this is via sympathetic and this is via para sympathetic inhibition so once the cardiac acceleratory center is stimulated then what will happen there will be stimulation to the sa node there will be stimulation to contractility right so this will increase the heart rate and this will increase the increase the force of contraction eventually if heart rate and force of contraction both are increased what will increase there will be increased in the stroke volume so increase in the stroke volume will and along with the increase in the heart rate together what will they do they will increase the cardiac output because cardiac output is a product of heart rate and the stroke volume so when this is happening when this is happening there is there is tachycardia there is tachycardia and the cardiac deacceleratory sense the uh, center is like inhibited so there will be no inhibitory drive to the sa node or there will be no drop in the contractility okay now what is the advantage of this pain bridge reflex what is the implication of this one the implication of this pain bridge reflex is that when the cardiac output increases the blood flow to all the organs increases when the cardiac output increases the blood flow to all the organs increases now when all the organ gets more blood flow then what will happen more blood flow to the kidneys what will happen it has to again compensate for the increased blood flow it will it will induce natriuresis natriuresis means loss of water and sodium now by losing excess water and the sodium this one will bring down the blood volume back to normal so the high yield or the take away point from this vein bridge reflex means vein bridge reflex what does it mean it means that increase in the blood flow causes tachycardia or we can tell 
increase in the blood flow means the volume is more there will be hypertension so or we can say hypertension induces tachy cardia this is a circulatory reflex now this reflex this reflex is also called as the vaso pressor reflex vaso has come from the term vaso means the blood vessel pressor it is pressing it is causing increase in the increase in the heart rate it is inducing hypertension because of the blood flow and then increase in the tachycardia it is in the heart rate this is the vaso pressor reflex which is the main bridge reflex next comes the pushing reflex now pushing reflex this is actually a life threatening reflex it is a life threatening reflex which is seen when a person who comes with some kind of head injury and is like at, at the terminal point like very critically ill and is about to die so that is the time when pushing reflex is manifested so this reflex results due to head injury head trauma okay any kind of head accident any trauma hematoma when the blood accumulates around the blood vessel we call it hematoma or any kind of tumor of the brain these are the condition which elicits this pushing reflex now what are the components of this pushing reflex the components are vagus afferent nerve because all this reflex they act in a circuit in a neural circuit so there are more than one component so vagus afferent afferent nerve sympathetic and parasympathetic efferent nerve the baro receptors in the atria and left ventricular wall also the cardiopulmonary receptors the low pressure receptors and nucleus of tractor solitarius which is in the medulla these are the components of this neural circuit which is participating in the pushing reflex the pushing reflex it has a triad it has a triad of manifestation what is the triad of pushing reflex the triad is hyper tension it is systolic hypertension very pin point if i write it is the wide pulse pressure wide pulse pressure the gap between the systolic blood pressure and the diastolic blood pressure is huge the systolic blood pressure may be as high as like uh, 220 280 whereas the diastolic blood pressure can be as low as 60 so that huge gap the widened gap the wide pulse pressure that induces hypertension is the first triad it's first of the triad second one is the 
reflex bradycardia reflex bradycardia third is apnea bradycardia we know decrease in the heart rate like 60 when the heart rate is 60 and below it is bradycardia apnea apnea means temporary stoppage in the breathing again very pin point if i say it is regular breathing cane stokes breathing these are the trials of a cushy reflex so now what actually happens is say this is the brain just for understanding say now say there has been accumulation of the cerebrospinal fluid there has been too much of accumulation of cerebrospinal fluid which is pushing in the adjoining areas of the brain so this immediately causes many fold increase in the intracranial pressure intracranial pressure now one thing for the blood to perfuse each and every organ the mean arterial pressure should be greater than the intracranial pressure okay so the blood to perfuse each and every organ the mean arterial pressure should be high and in case of the brain the mean arterial pressure should be greater than the intracranial pressure now if the situation is that there is increase in the intracranial pressure so when there is increase in the intracranial pressure the blood flow to the brain is very less it becomes very very less because there is no force that is thrashing what is mean arterial blood pressure mean arterial blood pressure in our last class we discussed this is the pressure which is like between 90 to 100 mmg or 95 to 100 mmg which is actually pushing the blood giving the thrush giving the force to the blood to go and perfuse the organs brain heart kidneys everywhere liver all the structures are getting the blood perfusion blood flow only when the mean arterial blood pressure is higher than the blood pressure that is in the organ so if the intracranial pressure due to any reason if it is more then the brain is not getting enough blood flow right so if there is no blood flow to the brain there is in adequate oxygen to the brain right to the brain a condition which is ischemia so this ischemic condition what it does it induces hypoxia that is drop in the partial pressure of oxygen and hypercapnia that is increase in the partial pressure of the carbon dioxide these are the two things that it will induce okay after that when this happens the brain cannot tolerate that one the person goes into dizziness okay now when the pressure in the mean arterial pressure is less and there is no perfusion then drop in the blood pressure it stimulates the it stimulates the barrel reflex now this barrel reflex stimulation it will increase immediately very fast it will increase the blood pressure to as high as 
हार्ट इज पंपिंग मोर ब्लड इट विल induce tachy cardia now what do we know we know we have learned from the mary's law from mary's law that blood pressure has inverse relation to the heart rate so when there is tachy cardia and the blood pressure is also very high then what will happen Again, again, what will happen is that the baro receptors in the aorta and carotid sinus will decrease the heart. Rate. How we how it will decrease the heart rate via the nucleus of tractus solitarius. We have seen right that information will go to the nucleus of tractus solitarius and it will stimulate the deacceleratory center and inhibit the acceleratory center. So this one will now cause a cause a drop in the heart rate because the blood pressure has gone up and it has been sensed by the baro reflex and it will cause decrease in the heart rate which is called as reflex bradi cardia now we know that cardiac output is a product of heart rate and stroke volume right and arterial blood pressure is a product of systemic vascular resistance into the cardiac output so we have seen we have seen here due to the reflex the cardiac output the cardiac output has gone up so this will induce the increase in the arterial blood pressure which is the hypertension and the reflex bradycardia will cause decrease in the heart rate now when this is happening all this centers nucleus tractus solitarius accelerator center deacceleratory center where are they this centers are in the brain stem so when the medullary centers in the brain stem is altered then the breathing rate is also altered now why the breathing rate is altered that is the control for the control for the respiration also lies in the brain stem so whenever the brain stem is compressed or anything that affects the brain stem alters the functioning of the brain stem or affects the centers in the medulla not only the heart rate will be affected it will also affect the breathing so this will induce in regular breathing 
first first rapid shallow breathing followed by temporary stoppage of breathing so rapid shallow breathing as we know is tachypnea and stoppage of breathing is apnea so irregularly tachypnea followed by apnea this is what is called the key stroke disease so if a person is brought in to the emergency with altered consciousness with irregular breathing with wide pulse pressure it is highly indicative of pushing reflex and emergency treatment has to be done another thing that happens here is like as we mentioned here that the here the cardiac center like uh, the cardiac accelerated center is stimulated as well as there is increase in the blood pressure now this increase in the blood pressure again it rises to 280 to 300 right so it immediately it immediately decreases the heart rate via the nds so now this is a point that we have discussed so many times so nds what does it do nds decreases heart rate that is reflex bradi cardia by how by stimulating the deacceleratory system right so the deacceleratory system is via the parasympathetic nervous system it decreases the heart rate by stimulating the para sympathetic nervous system now it is seen that as a side effect it is seen that when when this when parasympathetic nervous system is stimulated that is a vagus nerve is stimulated on the side what happens it stimulates the gastric choose secretion now this stimulation or increase in the gastric juice secretion induces an ulcer which is called as the cushing ulcer so very often patient who suffer from this who manifest that uh, cushing reflex also run the risk of suffering from cushing ulcer because to bring down the blood pressure to to more than the blood pressure to control the heart rate because the blood pressure has increased there has been also tachycardia now that massive tachycardia is followed by reflex bradycardia and for the reflex bradycardia the parasympathetic nerve is stimulated the parasympathetic nerve it induces the secretion of the gastric juices so when this is stimulated more there is more secretion of the gastric juice which results in pushing okay another physiologically important reflex is the vesal jarish reflex now what is the vesal jarish reflex now this is this is a this is a chemical coronary reflex the components of this neural circuit the components are again vagus afferent sympathetic and 
parasympathetic efferent nucleus of tract is solitarius in the medulla then we have here the varo receptors in the atria and left ventricle wall and also chemo receptors of the medulla now here the funny thing is that though it is a chemical coronary reflex means this reflex is elicited or induced by some chemical substances yet not only the chemo receptor but also the varo receptor and the stretch receptor that is present in the atria as well as in the ventricles of the on the walls of the ventricles they also have the stretch receptor they can also feel or they participate in the elicitation of this reflex now this reflex chemical substances like serotonin like capsaicin like toxic metabolites and very often patients of myocardial infarction elicit this reflex okay this substances they can they trigger they trigger this reflex the substances they trigger this reflex okay now how does it actually happen so what before that what are the trials of this bizarre church now the trials of this will solve that is reflex is hypotension hypotension bradi cardia decrease in the heart rate and apnea okay so what happens is these chemical agents they stimulate the receptors that is the varo receptors in the atria and ventricular wall so once they trigger once they give the signal then the nucleus of tractus solitarius is stimulated once the nucleus of tractus solitarius is like stimulated here it will inhibit the cardiac accelerated center and it will stimulate the the accelerated center now this cardiac accelerated center which is inhibited that is by inhibiting the sympathetic nerve fiber what it will do it will inhibit the sa node it will inhibit contractility and it will inhibit vaso constriction and the deaccelerator center that is via 
stimulating the parasympathetic nerve fibers again it will decrease the heart rate because parasympathetic nerve fiber it will cause decrease in the firing from the sa node it will decrease the force of contraction means negative inotropy and it will cause vaso dilation this is what it will cause so when there is vaso dilation and when there is like drop in the heart rate the drop in the heart rate will cause drop in the stroke volume altogether it will decrease the cardiac output and since this parasympathetic nervous system is inducing vasodilation and sympathetic nervous system inhibited is stopping vasoconstriction so together decrease in the cardiac output and decrease in the systemic vascular resistance due to vaso dilation will cause decrease in blood pressure which ultimately will result in hypotension so this is the one trial that will happen now this hypotension when this is happened automatically there was like decrease in the heart rate that's why hypotension has happened so inhibition to sa node results in the bradycardia now again since there has been inhibition there has been inhibition tone that is going to the medulla in inhibitory signals to and from medulla affects the respiratory center in the medulla which is in the brain stem now this causes temporary stoppage in breathing which is called as the apnea okay these are the trials and why they are caught now if we integrate all this reflex as the high yield to remember we can remember like pushing reflex what is it it is the last stage critical reflex leading to death okay it may lead to death okay it's a very critical reflex okay here pain bridge reflex it increases heart rate and cardiac functions whereas the basal cherish reflex okay moderates the increased in moderates it moderates the increase in heart rate and 
cardiac functions. So these three are the essential physiological reflex in the body. Okay. So this is all for today. Hope this lecture is useful to you. See you all again on Monday with a new topic. Okay. Thank you. Good night.